Uh, shitty zombie movie, no like. Welcome back to the 31 Nights of Fright overview of the short-lived NBC horror anthology Fear Itself. Today we continue the review with the next episode in line of the Batch of the Worst entitled Something with a Bite. This episode tells the story of a veterinarian, Wilburn Orwell, who becomes a werewolf after getting bitten by one at work. Now, for those who have seen previous horror-related videos of mine, know that I am a huge fan of classic themes in horror, so when I hear that this episode will be about werewolves, I got very excited. As I was watching the episode, I could tell that it was going to be a horror comedy, and while that wasn't what I expected from the synopsis of the episode, I still had hopes for it, since I did enjoy Shaun of the Dead, so I am down with a good horror comedy. Once I got to see the werewolf, I started worrying as it looked like a joke, and I've seen a horror film with a sock puppet, Killer Turk and I took it more seriously than this werewolf presented in the episode. This was going to be a bad horror comedy and indeed that's what it turned out to be. The episode tried, but it just fell flat at every attempt at any emotion ranging from fear and humor. Let's start with the characters themselves. I'm all for self-aware dumb characters, but these are just poorly written characters that are not only dumb, but flat, two-dimensional, and just not interesting. When they see the werewolf, everyone is lost as to what it is. As a matter of fact, they think it's a bear. They even go the majority of the episode not knowing what the hell it is. What? You serious? To not exactly know what the creature is, is one thing, but to be completely oblivious to the point where it's painful is a whole different monster. How can anyone create such dense and dumb characters? To boost the intelligent insult factor, the episode tries to throw in life lessons using the protagonist, but it ends up being a sad, comical, bumbling scenario that you would see in a 1930s comedy. The werewolf, as I mentioned before, looks cheaply made. The acting is bad, the pacing is slow, dialogue is pure nonsense, comedy is flat, and it doesn't produce a shred of fright. I've walked by bathrooms scarier than this episode. I mean, this episode is simply too stupid to enjoy. They take a werewolf to a vet for crying out loud. Had this at least been self-aware of its own stupidity, then it might have worked. But it's executed in a sense where the creators thought it was funny and scary despite the crap on screen. Next up is an episode called The Circle. Now this one in particular really isn't bad. In all honesty, the first three episodes I covered are the bad ones with the rest either being okay or stunning. This is one of those moderate episodes that had its fair share of problems but still managed to be moderately good. Its issues mainly stem from production and budget reasons. In this episode, a wicked woman decides to punish her ex-boyfriend, who is a published horror author, by putting a curse on him that makes a zombie-like virus in his horror novel attack him and those around him. The author is in a cabin with his agent, publicist, and new girlfriend when the curse is executed. Now this is a good story on paper and was fairly good on screen. The episode kicks off to a strong start with the Wiccans setting up their curse using these trick-or-treaters that will serve as a small but seemingly creepy role later on despite being minor. From there the mystery kicks in as we see our protagonist in the cabin Lodge talking about the horror novel which allows the viewers to get a little bit of insight into the virus that will soon come to life. After a brief discussion, all hell breaks loose as the horrors of the story come to life. From there it becomes like Night of the Living Dead with the darkness trying to get in the cabin with the survivors trying to fight it off and find a cure and an end to their situation. The episode has a bittersweet ending with a climax that's a little bit anticlimactic, but the story is good for the most part. Its problems really come from its production issues and budget. This episode makes the most use of CGI and special effects, and you could tell that the budget wasn't there to make things look remotely convincing. I mean, I've seen music videos with higher budgets. You can clearly tell that things were made on a tight budget with this episode, and it's a bit sad considering that it could have been so much more better if it looked like it was imagined in the minds of the creators. Tune in for tomorrow's episode as we further delve into fear itself. Don't be bringing that trash up in here. This is my house.